And now join us here on the Inland Sports Show, one of our good buddies, fresh off a of vacation, still with the vacation beard, but he wanted to jump on because we've got to talk high school football as we get ready for 2024. It is the one and only Ramona Hall of Famer, the big Jeezy, Jeff Gorham. Jeff, what is cracking, man? All I know is you called me just a friend. I was once part of this great embodiment of a high school and local sports show and now i'm just a dear friend just a dear I, friend who's vacationing and living the good life and just chilling oh i'm telling you have you ever been to uh, south carolina no well my wife and i decided she's an edgar allen fan so she wanted to like go see where you know all everything about edgar allen poe and she's weird by the way she's absolutely weird so we go to this place it is it is 100 degrees and like 900% humidity. It was, have you ever sat in a, in a spa in a steam room? Of course you have. You're a steam room kind of guy. Yes. <laughs> you're sitting there for like 20 minutes. You feel like you're going to pass out and you're just sweating, sweating. I was going to like fancy smancy restaurants in Charleston, by the way, which is no, no slouch. That is the cleanest city I have ever seen in my life. Not a piece of dirt on the ground. And I walked on cobblestones. I ate fish, I ate crab, I ate uh, fried green tomatoes. Mm. I had it all. I had she crab soup. It's only made from female crabs. I didn't even know that. I didn't either, but I'm it's get, fantastic. I'm getting educated. I had biscuits. I went to Fort Sumter. Look at my hat I'm wearing. And you raised the American flag. What was I that? raised the American flag on the first – they raised the American flag the first time – uh, the first boat we got over there crack of dawn because my wife's crazy and likes to get up early on vacation vacation doesn't exist in the gorm house we did plantations <laughs> we did the magnolia plantation we saw crocodiles or alligators we saw spiders bigger than your head pep which is not very big we saw you name it we saw i saw bugs i felt bugs biting my legs we went fossil hunting i told you this already we went i got 48 shark teeth i have one i'm going to bring to you and everybody on the on the uh, Inland Sports Show and Riverside TV football. You are amazing, Jeff. It sounds like a great trip uh, with your family. Oh, it was though. terrible. It was god awful. I had two kids <laughs> in the back seat. It was terrible. Don't you were exhausted. <laughs> the food was great. I got stuck in Washington, D.C. because something happened Saturday. You know what happened Saturday? Well, no, what happened? You know, something bad, big in the world. I was oh, in Washington, oh, oh. I thought you were talking about high school footballers. <laughs> yes, of course. No, I don't know. I mean, it's like. Wow, it was a busy day. It was a 27-hour day at the airport for the Gorms. Oh, my gosh. I was awake the entire time. And, boy, my God, you look good, Pep. I miss you. High school football, college football is back. Let's talk it. What are we talking now? Let's talk about Jeff, let's talk about the re-leaguing because, uh, you know, you brought it up and it got me thinking. I'm like, okay, I know a lot of teams are on the move, but, man, some of these leagues are going to look really different for 2024. I don't think you can see um, what I'm about to punch up over here. But everything, yeah, it's the uh, in fact, it's the Ivy League, and uh, okay, who's in that league? Uh, are well, we, who are we talking here? Well, the new additions are going to be uh, Liberty, Paloma Valley, and Vista del Lago. They're going to join Rancho Verde, JW North, and last year's Ivy League champion, and of course, that would be Orange Vista. So, Jeff, that that's a pretty darn good league right there. That's a really good league. You can't unseat the brothers, though. The brothers out there at Rancho Verde, but man, that's it's not a bad league. Uh, that's gonna be, there's gonna, what do you? I think Liberty, the bite. Are they the Bison? The, the Bison. bison? Uh, you can't ever go against the mighty Bison who are just around the outside of the uh, the uh, Gorham Stately Gorham Manor here. I go Bison is are going to be great. I think John W. North has to be better this year. They have to be, and. Uh, Rancho Verde, Orange Vista, they're, they're just, they're powers. That'll be a fun conference. It will. You coach know what? Like, there's going to be a good team or two that does not make the playoffs. Out of it. I'm looking at it. Let's say, you know, just for the sake of our conversation right now, Orange Vista, Rancho Verde, and Liberty, maybe they're the top three teams. I mean, you know, you got to finish in the top three for a playoff spot. That's that's tough for Vista Del Lago, Paloma Valley, and North. Yeah, but how many of those teams are going to have a, a over 500 uh, winning record at the end of the year? I bet we get an at-large from that. That's a good league. That is and what happens with those teams that get at-larges or third in their conference? They only win the state championship. Or like Ramona, state. right? I mean, we exactly. saw Ramona do it. Yes, we've seen it with Arlington a couple years ago. They came in. It was it was a wild card, whatever it was. And, and Arlington goes on. You know, coach should have retired after his first year. He'd have been champ forever. 
but that's uh, you know beside the point. So it's not the worst. It's not the worst thing in the world to be in a really tough league and and sneak into the playoffs, a third place team, a fourth place team, and then make a deep CIF run. I think we're going to continue to see this every single year from a team, you know, like Ramona. Ramona's been in the playoffs. They've been successful. They've won more games than everybody. But there's going to be one of those teams going to fall into that niche. Nor Vista might not ever fall into it because they've been so dominant for years. But there's going to be a team that will just maybe get outside in their third or fourth place in their league and have an opportunity to win championships. That's pretty – that means it's cool, but it's also you feel bad if, you, if you're a league champion. All right, so Jeff, that was the Ivy League. Let's stay in the Rain Cross Conference. I'm going to look down at the uh, the Sun Belt League real quick. And uh, in the Sun Belt League, we got some new additions from well, the old River Valley. We got Hillcrest and Arlington joining the Sun Belt League. Let's see, they got Hemet, uh, Riverside Poly, and Rancho Christian, and Valley View as well. So that's a one, two, three. Yeah, that's a six-team league. So that's, that's a pretty good league as well now. Okay, now you look at this. I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, Travis Carter over at uh, Hillcrest. He's coming in. He still has his top returners. He's got Vences, the kid that had over a thousand yards, yeah, did nine touchdowns last year. Uh, Beltron, who's a three-year starter on the offensive line, R- Roberto Bustamante will lead the defense. He had seventy-seven tackles last year. And Julian, remember Julian Sandoval seems like he's been around forever. He yes. And uh, Matthew Ramos, who did almost everything last season, will be the quarterback of note for Travis Carter. And remember, one last guy. I know I'm going all Hillcrest here. Noah Mayweather and uh, Zach Guerrero will be the two guys on offense. They're going to be pretty darn good. They have everybody returning who I thought was a very, very good team last year, especially at the end of the season. Yeah, I was going to say, they got a lot of guys coming back. You just did the roll call right there. So a lot of the key players from last year's team and, uh, and and Sandoval's a great receiver. I can't remember if it was last year. The I think it was last year when he was hurt, right? We didn't see a whole lot of him. Yeah, I think he was like out for an entire year. One of the last two years, he's been yeah. gone. But you look at Rancho Christian. Rancho Christian is one of those schools, you know, like Linfield Christian has been great one year. And then they have this uh, lower, you know, uh, not a down year, but a, not a success because they're a smaller school. But you look at them, they always have transfers coming in from big schools, uh, they could be a sleeper, and I think they them with uh, Travis Carter and Hillcrest could be the one to get punch over there. All right, Jeff, let's just round out the Rain, the Rain Cross Conference with the Inland Valley League real quick. We'll just touch on it. The teams, uh, actually the new teams in that league, let's see, it's going to be Citrus Hill and Heritage. And let's see, they're going to be joining Paris, which is actually a new team as well because Paris came over from the Mountain Pass. So Paris, Heritage, Citrus Hill. Moreno Valley, Lakeside, and Canyon Springs. That's your new Inland Valley League. Oh, you know, Citrus Hill, Ron Geringer. He's been everywhere. He's been successful everywhere. He's been a champion everywhere he's been. Uh, other than Corona, but hey, you're playing against Centennial and the big wigs every single week. He's going he's gonna to be able to coach those kind of kids up there at Citrus Hill. He is going to love it a lot like Sanji. Those are junkyard dogs, uh, hard knocks. Local kids, I think you'll get them a lot better than they've been in the past. So I hope I hope Ron Geringer's going to do well. And Elsnor, uh, new coach last year, did a great job. They're going to be good again, I think. You know, um, yeah, that league's going to be wide open, I feel like. Um, you know, one of those teams, like well, like we talked about, you win your league or get into the playoffs, and maybe yes. you get in Division 12 or 13 or whatever, and you're going to make a, a, you know, a long playoff run uh, yeah, in one if, of those if divisions. If Sisters Hill makes the playoffs, think about this. They've been like one in like 37 or whatever the last – uh, three and a half plus years. They haven't had a great record. You go in, you make a playoff. You're going to be at the lowest division. You get the tough and, and grit of those uh, local kids. You can you can win. We've seen it, at Ramona. We've seen that CSDR number t- twice, and we're seeing it all over the place. Arlington a few years ago. We could see it happen as well up at Citrus Hill, possibly. Yeah, maybe the reemergence of Heritage. Right? I mean, Heritage exactly. was dominant for so long. Maybe this will kind of jumpstart their program. A lot of new homes built right around the Heritage High School area. They're going to get a lot of new kids. I live out here. I see it every day. They're going to they're going to be back. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so that was the Rain Cross Conference. Let's go to the Mountain Pass League because it's uh, a couple teams from the Mountain uh, from the Rain Cross that went to the Mountain Pass. So uh, the teams that are let's see, new in the Mountain Pass, Temescal Canyon and Elsinore. The teams that are still in the Mountain Pass. San Jacinto, the longtime league champion, Tokwitz and West Valley. So only a five-team league. So the teams in this league, they got six non-league games. This could be well, you know, you can't count San Jacinto out. I mean, they have just 
built a dynasty the last couple of years. I mean, they're formidable against anybody around. They go toe to toe with the big boys. You can't count them out. But you never know with the, you know the schools out here in this what is it the southwestern area of Menifee and Marietta. There's teams to show up. We've seen Chaparral come out of the ashes. We've seen uh, uh, Temecula Valley come out of the ashes under Burt. I mean, we've seen teams do this, and that is a key area to get guys. You get a good program going and get them uh, situated where they're under a you know the same regiment. They're going to be pretty good. Look for one of those teams to pop up. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I think that Elsinore versus Tokwitz game is going to be really good. And uh, I know, uh, you know, Elsinore is always strong. So I don't know if they have enough to challenge, you know, mighty San Jacinto. But uh, that league is going to be, uh, it's going to go through the jack. It's gone through the jack for about the last five years. So it's still going to go through uh, the jack. What else do we got, Pat? All right, Jeff, now we've got the River Valley League. I know it's very close to your heart. It's a little bit different, and uh, I'll say it's kind of top-heavy. we got Norda Vista, Ramona, and Patriot, your holdovers, and those might be the three best teams in that league. You also have La Sierra, and now you've added Supa Dupa, Harupa Valley, and Rubido. They both come over from the uh, old Mountain Valley League. But I'll tell you what, it's going to be a lot of the same. I'll tell, it's going to go one, two, either way. You got Ramona, defending state champion. You got Troy Long, who's making a return. So sincerely, Tolbert, yeah. the great running back, comes back. Uh, Cody Shiner will be the quarterback of note. And I'm going to tell you, there's a freshman kid that played last year on the freshman team. Yes, Pep, I go to freshman games. His <laughs> name is Isaac Mata. He was a running back. I said he could have played on a large, lot of varsity high school teams last year. He will be the receiver for young Mr. Shiner. Uh, Ramona, state champs are going to have a big bullseye on their back, just yeah. like Arlington did a couple years ago. But you can never count out Ken Batdorf and the Norda Vista Braves. You got the one of the Elaines. You got Dreddy, Freddie, and Eddie. You have Dreddy, who's back. And uh, the great offensive line that he just builds every single season. Brand new turf, brand new stadium at Norda Vista High School. Oh, that's right. Uh, I, think, I think that uh, Ken Batdorf is going to win another league championship. I'm calling it now. I'm, I'm throwing out the salvos. In his 85th year of coaching, Ken Batdorf's going to win another River Valley League championship. And I think it comes down to Patriot and Ramona. Jeff, I'm going to miss the beat-up grass field. I really I am going to miss that. Well, you know, if you sit up in the press box, it looks like the map of the world. You see, like, <laughs> oceans and, and continents. And I'm like, I could tell Ken Baddorf went over in that corner and watered that area. But the rest of it was it was, it, it was by dirt. You had three different high schools and uh, flag football and KV <laughs> and freshmen. I mean, it was the most beat-up field in the city of Riverside. I'm going to so miss it, though. I'm going to miss it. I took some of the grass and I put it in my backyard. And guess what happened to it? It died. It died. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got my joke. But no, I, I think that uh, it's going to help Ken Batdorf. I think he's on the verge of retirement. Uh, and he's going to join us in the booth at Riverside TV sometime in the future. Is it 31? Is Seriously, but uh, is it his 31st season coming up? Does that sound right? Second year. 32nd? Think, okay. Yeah. Dang. And he's, you know, we I still talk to him. He was like on another world when he was in Antarctica and then he was uh, somewhere else just recently. The guy's all over the world. I go to, Jeez. I go to freaking the south and got bit by bugs and almost got killed. Almost, almost killed. And nice. he goes over to nice parts of the world. I go read about Edgar Allan Poe and the Raven. You know, he's a he's a world traveler. It doesn't he doesn't really strike me as one, but he is. He's a world traveler. What do you mean? Have you seen his belly? Have you seen all the world traveling foods that guy's been eating? <laughs> Dude, he, he eats lobsters without cutting them open. He just bites into them. Ugh. Hey, can we talk about Martin Luther King and Jason Maines? Why not? Well, I'll tell you what. I think they're going to be pretty darn good. What do you think? I think they are, too. I think uh, that league has been, the last couple of years, it's been a real toss-up. Marietta Mesa and Great Oak have been really good. But King's been right there in the mix. Temecula Valley, they're kind of a wild card. Right. You know, they could be really good, too. So it's I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And at Santiago, our guy Coach Morrison is back. So I think I that league is, is really competitive. I love Coach Morrison, but they're going to lose. The best player in the entire league is gone. He transferred to play baseball at Orange Lutheran. Oh, that's Blake right. Bowen. For, for King, yeah. Yeah, he was my favorite player in all of high school sports. But there is a guy named Derek Kuhn who didn't get to play much. He had to play behind Blake Bowen, stuck with it. And I'm telling you, I saw McMaines talk to him about my South Carolina trip. He said that kid is going to be tough, 
tough. You got one of the George brothers. Logan George is going to be a senior. And I'll tell you, he's got uh, Riker Galvin, Derek, uh, Derek Conn, like you said, the young wide receiver, Luke McCray, Noah Villanueva, who's been around forever. They're, I think uh, McMaines lost some dudes, but they're going to, I think they're going to be pretty. I'm calling McMaines to win another, uh, win another CIF playoff game. And I bet you he's he's anxious to get back on the field again and get it going because remember, uh, what did they lose in the semifinals in like an overtime, wasn't it? It was like a heartbreaking yes. loss. Didn't it like didn't it hit the goalpost? I or think something? it did, it, like the extra remember, point. And, and then we called him right afterwards, and I oh. made fun of him. And he wanted to beat me up. Oh, I, love, I love Jason McMaines. He would have beat like, you up too. He's he's tough. He's a tough little guy. He looked, he looked, <laughs> yeah, but I enjoy it. You know, that was fun. I got to rip my buddies. He hosted with me when you were gone. Remember, he was with me at RCC. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a, a good dude. Yeah, he's a really you, good you were, dude. You were, you were MIA for that. I was. All right, Jeff, finally, <laughs> I want to ask you, a bit that I know it has nothing to do directly with the Riverside schools because you're Mr. Riverside TV. But, I but I listen, I don't know if you know about this. This is kind of cool, and I don't know if other leagues will adopt this. But in the Mountain Valley League, you know, Harupa Valley and Rubido left the Mountain Valley to join the River Valley. So instead of going out and getting other teams in the Mountain Valley League, the schools that stayed, uh, let's see, so that's A.B. Miller, San Bernardino, Indian Springs, and Pacific, they decided that they're going to do a home-and-home home against one another. So they're going to play each other twice in one season. Uh, at You know, each team gets a home game. So do you think that could ever catch on where, like, Centennial and Norco would play twice in a year. and They'd each take a turn being the home team. Unequivocally, no. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh-oh, this is going to be a curveball. Let's no, go. No, no, I, th I think it hurts you. I, I just do. I mean, you got to go out and play. You know, you know and I, no offense, I agree to a point, but kids want to play against other high schools. They want to play against other teams. You don't want to see your buddy twice or somebody you don't like twice. <laughs> I got to see you at least twice a week. And I don't know what I'm thinking, but you want to play against other guys. You want to nine different opponents. So I disagree with to a point. Um, so maybe it's a, for travel reasons, purposes, maybe it's cheaper, whatever it is. I, I don't know. I he called me an old school guy. Hey, I'm watching Bronny in the background. You see oh, that? please don't. Hey, he just shot another air ball, Pat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he did. That that part's probably true. That's the first <laughs> true thing you said all all interview. <laughs> oh, I'm getting back in the in the in the fun of things. We got RCC football coming up, Pep. State hey, champs. Who else the state champs. Tonight? Who do you What's, got on the show? Uh, we're gonna go live in just a second. We got Bob Stangle, the head football coach for Redlands High School. They're gonna kick oh, off like the year guy. at Hawaii. We're gonna talk some Aquinas football, and uh, yeah, so we got some stuff going on. Oh, I saw like a Bellavo. Do you have Bellavo on? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's going to come on and talk about the Wisconsin Badgers. You know, her dad's a wet napkin. I call him that every time I see him. <laughs> the, now, what the, a wonderful guy. What a wonderful coach. I but you know what? It's funny. I didn't know this. I guess Maddie was really good at soccer. And during COVID, she kind of had to make the choice, like, uh, do, do I want to oh, do both sports? I can only do one. And she chose softball. Yeah, you know, whatever. That's just Bellavo telling you something like she's a great soccer Like, hey, my <laughs> kid's a great soccer player. My kid's awesome. He plays AYSO. He scores. And then, come on. His daughter, though, she can throw BB shots. Yeah, she's a beast. Yeah. He is He is the best, uh, second best soccer coach in Riverside County. You know who the first best is? Uh, hold, I don't know. Tell me. I don't know. He just, he's no matter what. Oh, uh, <laughs> second. Of second. Oh, Kevin Watson. He just, uh, remember oh Arlington. At Arlington. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's handsome, too. Way better looking than uh, Bellavo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jeff, football season is right around the corner. You can catch them on Riverside TV. <laughs> What's the When's the first game? What's the week zero game? What, you already what are you know? talking about the first game? We got the coach's perspective. We oh. have the coach's preview show. We have the pep the pep rally. We got the rice the rice zone. <laughs> the rice zone. We got just John Rice Zone. John Rice is going to be our in studio guest, and we're going to have five, six, seven, eight, nine games, whatever, and he's going to be the red zone guy. Break it all down. He's going to be sitting in a corner smoking a cob pipe with an old, uh, an old, like an old hat and fishing. That doesn't he look like a fisherman? He does. Don Rice looks like a fisherman, and just he needs you to put him in a raincoat and a little a triangle hat. Fresh off Lake Paris and right into the studio. And yes, okay, I'm gonna let you go. One more thing, I have to say. Two more things. Just say it. Billy Cardosi, my thoughts and prayers are with you. Billy Cardosi had a heart issue. Oh, no. Yeah, I, I talked to him yesterday. I texted him when I came back from South Carolina. And I want to say this. I love you, uh, Billy Cardosi. 
and I am praying for you every day. Oh, same here. I didn't know that. I'll have to reach out to him. What's the yeah, second everybody thing? Everybody reach out to Billy Cardosi and say, uh, Gorham said you got sick. What's the, sec he's, he's what's the, the second thing? Okay. The last thing is, uh, dear friend Ron Main, who is in, uh, not do feeling well right now in the hospital. He is at home, I believe, today. Ron Main, you are the greatest athletic director of all time. And Ken Batdorf and I really love you. And I, I am praying and thinking about you 24-7. That's it. I love you, Ron Main. I love you, Pep Fernandez. Yeah, Ron is a great dude. I bet you he was uh, somewhat instrumental in that new field at uh, at Norda Vista, right? The turf. He probably he was, behind the scenes was making it happen. You know what? The, you know, we, I said we should do red turf because if you know Coach Main, he's always like blushing red because he's always <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I said, why don't we call it the red turf, Ron Main turf, because he's like a red guy and he lives red for Norda Vista, obviously. But uh, our thoughts and prayers are with. Uh, seriously, the best athletic director in the history of the world and one of my best friends in the world. I had a chance to talk to him. I love you, Coach Maine. I'm with can you, we, buddy. Can we, can we just call it like Ron Main Field at Alvord District Stadium or Wyatt Earp Stadium? Or I, I stadium? will call it. I will, no matter what I'm going to call it that. And no, I don't care what the dang stadium is. Zach Earp Stadium, uh, Ron Main Field, of course, for gosh sakes. And then when, and then. And then someday we'll add like in the end zone, we'll put Batdorf because he'll have been there like 900 years. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, I'll see you again real soon, brother. Bye-bye. I love you, buddy. See you guys uh, coming up.